Hey, yo, hey everyone, Andrew here, bringing you another video review, and today we're going to be doing Justice the League of America, American Dreams. Take a look there. Now, American Dreams can be divided up into three different stories, which is really quite interesting seeing that it's a very, very thin graphic novel. The first story deals with the Justice League wanting to bring in some new members, and among those members are people like, um, Artemis, or Supergirl, or Steel, or Plastic Man, and Green Arrow, and so on and so forth. Um, and at the same time, Dr. Marl and Dr. Ivo, the people that created the Red Tornado and Amazo, create the Woman of Tomorrow, or Tomorrow Woman. I forget which order the name goes. Who cares? She really doesn't matter. She's insignificant. And they plant her in as one of the candidates, and she joins the Justice League. Um, and she's there to kind of sabotage them and betray them and backstab them and all the fun stuff that an evil spy would do. However, she's so intelligent and she, she, her programming to be this hero is so strong that she goes against everything that she's told and actually helps the Justice League. Uh, she never backstabs them and she eventually dies. Oh please, that's not a spoiler. Who cares? You know she's not going to live. So she dies, and they go after the evil doctors, and yada yada yada. That's that's really it. The second one deals with Angel, <laughs> um, and an angel called Zural, who becomes a member of the Justice League later on, uh, for a short time at least. And originally Grant Morrison wanted him to be the new Hawkman, but it just didn't work out well. Apparently, there's a bunch of angels coming from heaven, waging war on Earth. That's a big suggestion that you need to know. Zural teams up with the Justice League to stop this invasion on Earth from heaven. Yeah. Um, which was a decent story. However, it's the last story that's really quite good. The Justice League finally decides on who their uh, next member is going to be. They decide the new Green Arrow, Connor. And tell you the truth, I really didn't like this Green Arrow. Uh, one, because he was replacing Oliver Queen, and two, as I really didn't know but this story is actually what made him turn around to me, what made me like him. Now, keyword is like. I don't love him, I just like him. Uh, but this story really did turn him around. The key comes back, and if you guys remember the key, then good for you. If you don't, then I suggest you reading up on him. He was one of the bad guys for the Justice League International, or the original Justice League, or whatever. So anyway, the key comes back. And basically he ambushes the Justice League, and he puts most of them all in these dream states. Uh, with the exception of, I believe, the Flash and, of course, Green Arrow, because he just arrives onto the Watchtower when they are in these dream states. And while they're in these dreams, they have these ultimate versions of what they really would want their life to be. For example, Superman's version is Krypton was never destroyed, um, however, he gets the Green Lantern power ring. So he's still a superhero, but he's on Krypton. Uh, Batman's is, and I love Batman's, I wish Batman's would come true for the comics, but Batman's is that he grew old and married Selina Kyle, um, they had a child, and Tim Drake became the new Batman, and their child uh, became the new Robin. I believe it was like Bruce Jr., but it doesn't matter. Wonder Woman um, has a dream that her and Steve and Trevor are back in the 40s fighting uh, Nazis and super Nazis and, and cartoon Nazis and just Nazis in general. And lastly, Green Lanterns, I don't know what it is. I think he was some kind of superhero robotic thing. Batman just basically says Nintendo has a lot to answer for and kind of like says, snap out of it, Green Lantern. So he does. And the Flash tries hard to get to the key and stop him, but it's really just the Green Arrow. And the Green Arrow has to go through all the Watchtower defenses and all the Keys defenses and all these robots and all this different stuff on very little um, ammunition. He doesn't have that many arrows. He only has the arrows from the, um, the, the show arrows that Olive Queen used to have that were in the trophy room for the Justice League. And he actually takes out the key, which was pretty good. He earned my respect. Doesn't mean I love him, but he earned my respect. And that's the last of the stories. So on to the good, the bad, and whether or not you should get Good is, um, all the stories... Well, no, the last two stories were pretty good. The first story was meh. I really didn't care for it. It was only, like, two issues. No, it was only, like, one issue. It wasn't even that big. So it really was the two last two stories that were really good. And they had
had good concepts to it. I enjoyed the return of the key. I enjoyed how Green Arrow kind of went through all the trials to kind of get to the key and stop him. I like the alternate dreams. Uh, the battle between Heaven and Earth and Zero coming out and all the angels fighting was kind of interesting. Um, you got to see a little bit more Aquaman in there. Oh, by the way, an Aquaman's dream was that everything was water. And he was the ruler of everything. And he had his hand. So, um, the concepts and stories were nice. The art was fantastic. Um, I think characters like, uh, Batman, Wonder Woman, and Green Arrow were really showcased very well with this art. Aquaman was too. Um, downsides. Uh, really the big major downside is, I mean, look how thick that is. It's, it's not that thick, and you're cramming three stories into this. Um, the last two stories had two issues, where the first story only had one issue to commit to it, a total of five. Really, I would have loved to see, maybe, instead of three stories, one story, or at the most, two stories in there, with, like, three issues for each story. Because each story could have been expanded out a bit more. Um... Especially the last two. The first one wasn't that great. The first one was just like, meh, meh. But the last two was actually pretty nice. And it would have been nice if they had more issues to kind of expand on the story. This just had, I really don't like Superman when he was Superman Blue. I'm not going to lie about that. It really was annoying. But, whatever. Um, on a whole, whether or not you should get this. Well, it's definitely not quite as good as New World Order, but it was still fun. And again, for the price of... Seven dollars and ninety-five cents. I mean, that's ridiculously cheap by comic book standards. You're still getting a good five issues out of this. So, um, yeah, why not? It is a good story. It is good. And like I said, Grant Morrison's run on Justice League was really great. Uh, so, while this may not be the most fantastic of the issues, it's by far no way bad. It is a good, solid story. So I do suggest picking it up. That said, I'm going to end the review here. This is Andrew. Same. Peace out for now.